This week on CrossFeed. If that don't work, tell the church. Jesus with fish and bread, but not what you think. Prayer on the Jesus phone. How loud are you allowed to speak out? And what does G Christmas mean to you, besides Jesus? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. And on this 11th day of Christmas, I am Pastor Jim Butler out in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, in gorgeous New England. Hey, everybody, it's good to be back. Yeah, and Jim is looking so good. He got broadband, like fast, mm-hmm. real broadband. And, um, wow. It uh, really makes a difference. I think those, if anybody has been getting the audio because the video was horrible, now is the time to switch. So, man, I'm glad to know that the problem was on your end and not mine. <clears throat> well, we were sh- shooting stuff halfway across the country, buddy. You know, I mean, it. Uh, you know, yours comes automatically right on your thing. Mine has to be, you know, shoved over 1,500 miles. So. But, uh, yes, uh, we are at uh, a very fast connection out here now. So, uh, see, that's, that's what happens in cities. We, 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 were, we believe in being civilized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm actually amazed that this goes as well as it does because I still have pretty slow DSL. But, um, yeah, really, I'm, I'm excited that we can actually pull this off. Boy, you know, pretty soon we'll be doing HD. And then you can see all of the, like, little, you know, every little spot or scratch or you know or whatever on our faces and <laughs> i'm sure everybody wants to see that yeah <laughs> so um yeah i'm sure they did well we hope everybody had a very good christmas uh mine was very tired a uh, bit ours was we're, we're both very busy and everything hey if you haven't had a chance to go on uh, to youtube uh, to see Dale's sermon that the day uh, from Christmas Day, I put it, it in Dale? the feed. It's on VO. Okay, it, well, that's uh, all really, But yeah, if if you're really subscribed should, to the video yeah, feed, yeah. you've already seen it. It really is very well done. I was very impressed by it. Next year, I'll steal it. So you have to look at at the VO. I got a well, I got a lot of comments on it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the one on VO was particularly. Um, Poignant. <laughs> but, you mean nasty? Yeah, that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was vicious. I couldn't believe it. So, uh, but uh, oh well, we have to deal with uh, even those kinds of people and love them anyway. Um, but let's get ready. Let's move on into the stories. Where do you want to begin tonight? Oh, um, let's start with Long John Silver's. That sounds like a good place, although it's one of my least favorite places to eat, but uh, there it is. So there is a Long John Silver's out in Minneapolis and um, area, and they, of course, are owned and, and operated. They are a uh, franchise, really. Mm-hmm. And, there's a, and they're at the Mall of America. Uh, there's this Muslim family, and they ordered the three-year-old a kid's meal. And they got uh, the, the toy in the meal was this uh, notepad that you see a picture of there. It says, Build with Jesus, and has a, a, a Bible verse at the bottom. And, uh, you know, they uh, weren't too happy. And so they said, hey, do you have an alternative? And they said, well, no, nope, this is it. And this is your only chance. So uh, they they caught, got a hold of the Council on American Islamic Relations, uh, and they filed a complaint against uh, Long John's parent company, Yum Brands, which uh, owns Long John Silver's, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, all four companies that are owned by them. They're spun off of actually a PepsiCo. They uh, Pepsi actually used to own all of those. Yeah, which is why when you go to those places, they serve Pepsi products, and they're about the only ones that do, because Coke provides cheaper uh, pop to the other uh, restaurants. If you ever come to New England, you have to learn it's called soda. 
<laughs> Soder. Or in Boston, it's tonic. <laughs> okay. Tonic. It's like a tonic. So uh, people would look at you funny if you, you call it, think you're a rube if you call it a pop out here. But anyway, <laughs> um, you're from Delaware, Iowa, so maybe you are a rube. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, now, now, I don't know. I mean, there used to be a uh, um, donut place out here. Uh, um, it's down in the Rhode Island area, but it got kind of got chased out of uh, up here called by uh, Dunkin' Donuts, but it was called Best Eaten Donuts. And they used to have little Bible verses on their um, coffee cups. Doesn't Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Chick Fil A does, yes, but that that is that is uh, owned by a Christian guy, so uh, it, it really is a strictly Christian company. Hmm. Um, whereas I, you know, Long John Silver's, I don't, you know, don't think it necessarily is. Right. Um, I, I know some Chick Fil A restaurants even o- aren't even open on Sunday. I don't know if all of them, but I know some of them are. are or the one in St. Louis, I was there for a convention. I wanted to go there for lunch, and it was closed on Sunday. Yeah, I don't know. I've never eaten there. They're kind of pricey. Um, you know, for fast food, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've got mixed feelings about this. I mean, I guess it, when you're a franchise, you've got a certain amount of leeway. Um, and I, I don't know. I suppose part of it is, are you paying more, you know, for the toy? Most places at least have a under three toy, you know, for, for the little ones. That's not a choking hazard. And, so, it, in a sense, it kind of, if you'll pardon the pun, seems like they're trying to shove it down your throat. Um, <laughs> it just, it seems, it, it, it really, I think the thing that surprised me the most is it was Long John Silver's. I mean, obviously, you go to, like, any Long John Silver, you're not necessarily going to get this thing. This was a, a local thing. Um Surprising that it was in the Mall of America. I mean, you know, they do a lot of business. And, um, of course, the Mall of America also has a church in it. Um, like right one of the entrances off the parking ramp, you walk in and it's right there. Um, it's a storefront. I mean, <laughs> but it's, that's interesting in itself. But I don't know. I mean, I guess I always look at these things and I go, well, okay, what if I, you know, went to a place, got Happy Meals for my kids or whatever, and and it had some kind of Muslim thing? I wouldn't be too thrilled. I, I suppose it would depend on whether I paid extra for the kids' meal. You know, some places the kids' meal is actually cheaper than um, than the the equivalent if you bought the you know burger, fry, and drink or whatever. Um, you end up getting a discount. Other places it costs extra. You were basically you're paying for the toy. I wouldn't want to pay extra, you know, for something like this. Of course, I wouldn't want to pay extra for any of the junk that they include in those things. Usually. <laughs> well, I definitely wouldn't want to. I mean, this is Long John Silver's. I wouldn't eat there if you paid me. Uh, but that's another. That's side side the point. But I don't know. I, I mean, I looked at this and I thought, okay, this is pretty innocuous. You know, I mean, it's, you know, at the bottom, there's the Bible verse, and um, I can't, I don't know if you can make it out over there. For me, it's really small, but, uh, I mean, if I, I, I can look it up on, um, I should look at the picture here and, and, and find it. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it's not something that, you know, you're going to look at and really know. You know, it's not going to say a whole lot to a three-year-old. Oh, in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Uh, it looks like something that they probably bought from Oriental Trade. Mm-hmm. Um, because the three-year-old, or I mean, and most kids are going to read that and go, huh? <laughs> what is that? That's right. <laughs> what is that? And most adults are going to look at that and go, what does that mean? You know, because this is Bible verse out of context, you know. It, it might work very well if you were doing like the um, – remember the VBS a couple of years ago based on the construction company? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that, yep. that it would work for that. But, yeah, this is – I think it's – I mean, it's not saying, you know, 
the four spiritual laws here, you know, accept Jesus or go to hell. Um, yeah, it doesn't, you know, so you know it's way, not, uh, you know, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Yeah, I think most people are going to look at it and just kind of, you know, not even think a whole lot about it. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know if I necessarily think it's a, a good idea. I can't even say it's necessarily good evangelism. Uh, because, I mean, most kids aren't even going to pay attention to it. They're going to, you know, color on the inside of it. And... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a notepad. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's Jesus junk. Yeah, yeah, it's Jesus junk. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if there's such a thing as, you know, uh, Muslim junk out there or not, or, you know, or, or Muhammad junk. Uh, I mean, because you talked about, you know, if you got something, I don't know. I mean, if I was in um, a, one of the, I think it was one of the Catholic hospitals up here, St. Elizabeth's, I think it's the largest Catholic hospital up here. And they had a prayer on a wall, which was kind of nice. And then down below, I noticed it was from actually from the Quran. Um, hmm. But uh, the way it worded, it actually worded rather nice. And um, But I thought, that's interesting to see in seeing a Catholic hospital, quote, a quote from the Quran on the wall. Um, but, you know, I mean, so there could be certain things that, 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 you know, might be there and you might look at and just kind of, you know, go, that's kind of nice. You know, it doesn't, you know, but I don't know. I just, I think this is, I, and I think, okay, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with, with the family writing a letter to Yum Brands, uh, saying, you know, we found this really offensive. But getting this other organization involved, I think that's jumping the gun. I think they went way beyond what they needed to do there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I would write to, you know, Yum Brands first, you know, and, and complain to them. And if they didn't say something to me that I'd like to hear, then I would um, go to the next step of, you know, asking this other organization or and then releasing my complaint to the media. Yeah, I think that you know the first step here. We're gonna we're gonna start you know yelling and screaming. I think it. it it's not like it's some um, specifically anti-Muslim thing, right? You know, um, it's it, it. This is something that you know any number of people would disagree with. From you know anybody basically is not a Christian, and probably some Christians would go, eh, <laughs> "It's a little too goofy," you know. But um, it's it's not the kind of thing that. Uh, you know, if it was saying, you know, Muslims are evil or, you know, or something like that, uh, then, yeah, then, you know, I could see getting this organization like this involved or whatever. But, um, you know, I mean, are they going to go into Chick-fil-A next and, and start complaining there, you know, because right. it's franchise. It's, you know, that, that whole franchise thing, uh, if it's, it's privately owned, but it's, it's franchise, you know, they, different franchises are allowed certain freedoms in what variation they do from the norm and stuff like that. So, Right. There's two things that I think it's kind of funny in, in this article. And what is it? The guy says, because this is from a blog, he says, we're not quite sure what the purpose of Long John Silver's notepads was in the first place. They seem pretty lame. Bill the Jesus, if you're going to distribute religious material to kids, at least make it interesting. Mm -hmm. Talk about a snoozer of a kid's toy in the right. But I, I like this care in Minnesota, and they well, investigate the incident. Offer the, a, a, a formal written apology, review the toy distribution policy, and then participate in care sensitive and diversity training. And I bet you care will give it to them at a discount price, too. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, okay, so the first three makes sense. The last one, you know, come to our diversity and, and sensitivity training, you know, yeah. And well, I bet you you'll give it to him a good give it to us at a good price. Um, so, of course, they could always go out and just tell it to the church. Yep. Now, I came across this. You, you, your your yours was from uh, ms msnbc dot com uh, from this television station WJXT TV. I found the same article, which is where the picture came from. Um, from um, uh, um, um, Fox News, but uh, here, so we have this uh, woman, and her name is uh, Rebecca Hancock, 
and she's I don't know if she was divorced or if she's never married. I I'm, can't remember for sure which one. But she had a boyfriend. But yeah, okay. She, I think she was divorced because she had two children, forty nine years old, so she's about my age, and she's a member of this Grace Community Church, and she's living with her boyfriend, a guy by the name of Sex Young, uh, Frank Young, and um, somehow or another, it came out that they were they were. Um, uh, um, you know, having some kind of difficulty, and I guess she told this person in this prayer group about it or something. And next thing she knows, then the congregation, you know, it's being brought before, you know, this person says, this isn't good, this is biblically wrong. Um, and then she brought it up, and uh, then was brought up before some more members and stuff, and she kind of ignored that. And so now finally had gone through the, um, to the elders, at which point she, you know, decided to leave this church. You know, I'm, I'm, although her, her kids still go to Sunday school there. Mm-hmm. They still attend. And, uh, they yeah. said, um, and they said, look, we're going to go all the way. We will attend, uh, tell it to the church. Um, and if you go to the Fox News article, um, they actually, you can see a copy of the letter that was sent to her. And, uh, it's, uh, you know, it says, you know, this is not, you know, this is, you know, you, you bit, she'd only been a member there a couple of years, uh, since 2007. The standard for life and godliness has always been God's word, the Bible. Um, as you know, it's our responsibility as elders and shepherds of God's flock that we need to be neither speculators who invent new doctrines which please us, nor editors who excise old doctrines which just please, displease us. We are called to be God's stewards, dispense, dispensing faithfully to God's household the truths committed to us in scriptures, nothing more, nothing less nothing else. Any Christian who refuses to submit to the sound words of the Bible, the teachings that are in accord with godliness, displays an insubordinate heart, which is puffed up with conceit. The elders have attempted to contact you for further meeting to explain further and resolve this issue. Unfortunately, you have reserved, you have refused our efforts. Um, And then it said, uh, we need to now tell this to the church Unless you repent of the sin and grieve your meet to the elders regarding this issue, this third step will be carried out publicly on Sunday, January the 4th, 2000. Well, the letter says 2008, but they mean 2009. Um, so that is going to be, so it was supposed to be brought up to them today, publicly in the church. I'm not sure why she went to the media with this. That's... Yeah. Uh well I think it's funny. It's a you know, uh she she received this letter to make her personal life very public. Um you know, on January fourth my sins will be told to the church publicly with my children sitting in the church and my friends. So but um, so she beat him to it by going to the media and telling them about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unless they're planning on going into detail, which I would certainly hope not with kids sitting there. And, uh, frankly, um, I don't want to hear the details, you know. Which is interesting. Um, the Washington, uh, the Wall Street Journal had, on December 19th had this comment about the story. Whether or not it's a sin, it is n- none of anyone's business that Hancock is having a sexual relationship with her boyfriend. Here's hoping that she succeeds in shaming the church and dropping its plan to reveal that she is having a sexual relationship with her boyfriend. Something should remain private. And Hancock is right to think that her sexual relationship with her boyfriend is one of them. That is called dripping with sarcasm. You know, this person who is upset that they're going to make it public turns around and makes it public herself. Yeah. I I mean, okay, here's the thing. All right. If it's sort of public knowledge that she's in this relationship and that their relationship is as such, um, then... The church does have a responsibility to go to her and say, look, this is sin. You are acting against the word of God and and against the command of God. And it's not good for you. It's not, it's not good for, um, you know, on a, on a, uh, earthly level. It's not good for you on a spiritual level. And, you know, we want the best for you. We want you Mm -hmm. to experience really what God's love is all about, um, as, you know, and, and if you want to experience in that way, uh, marriage is the way to go. Um, 
And, you know, and yes, it is the church's responsibility to do that. And it sounds like they actually are following um, that. Now, sort of going, you know, turning it into the subject of the worship service, um, if, you know, if that's, it's kind of what it sounds like they're doing. This sounds more like the kind of thing you cover in like a, um, a voters meeting or, uh, you know, something like that or, a, right. you know, an elders meeting or something, you know. Actually, if she had not gone to the media with this, see what these mean people are doing to me, um, <clears throat> and made her relationship public, she could have sued them for invasion of privacy if they did it in a public worship service. Uh, there was, and back in the mid-1980s, or mid, early mid-1980s, a, a court case in Oklahoma in which this member of a church was having uh, an affair with the town mayor. And uh, I think she resigned. I can't re- I think, believe she resigned also from the congregation before it became public. And they announced it, that this was going on in a public worship service, and she sued for invasion of privacy and defamation of character. And the court agreed with them how, because it was done at a public worship service. If they had done called a voters meeting or a congregational only meeting, that would have been different. Well, yeah. Because it's a worship service, which is considered a public event, um, she, she, she won the court case. Right. And that's no. the difference. Because, you know, at a, at a congregational voters meeting, the only people present are the members of the congregation. You know, whereas you're going to any number of visitors or friends or family members mm-hmm. from out of town or whatever, you know, in a worship service. And, uh, you know, boy, it's, it's really none of their business. They're not part of the family. Hmm. You know, they're not part of the family. This, this is family business. Yep. And, but and, it, uh, yeah. it is something the family needs to, you know, needs to deal with. Deal with. Absolutely. So, and, and, um, you know, quite frankly, and I know we've mentioned this before on the show, um, this is something that churches don't like to deal with. This is something that churches tend to go, well, yeah, we really need to deal with that and then don't. All right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that happens because it's really hard to deal with. So I've got to say, now, if, if this church is going to handle this in a congregational meeting, then my hat's off to them. You know, good for them. They need to do that. They need to do it in a loving way. You know, they need to say, look, we're concerned about you. All right. We know that this is not good for your spiritual health. And um, Which is exactly what they really say. It's, you know, uh, this behavior is sin. It directly violates the express will of God. Um, all such behavior can be repented of and be, can be can be forgiven by God. Yeah. You know, this this is and yeah, and so and that's no. good. They really, you know, they need to emphasize that. You know, sometimes they just kind of kick him out, and it sounds like they're still letting her attend and everything. So, and that's you know, we've <laughs> talked about excommunication. Um, you never want to tell somebody you're not allowed to come to services or whatever. Uh, sometimes, in uh, you might define it as uh, can't come to communion. Um, or, uh, you know, or, or something like that, or just simply, um, your name is being removed from the roster as a member in good standing in this congregation. Right. Um, uh, but, but always with the emphasis that we want you to come back. We want you to turn away from this, from this sin and come right. back to the church and, and be forgiven. And it's really the goal right. is we want you to be forgiven. Right. They, they wrote it, the concluding paragraph says, we sincerely hope you receive this in the spirit of love in which it is intended. Our prayer is that you would repent of your sin, return to God, permit him to help you in this area. God keep you and guide you in the, sincerely in the love of Christ. You know, so, you know, I, you know, now I don't, I mean, how publicly they were planning on doing this to the worship, I don't know. Yeah. But she's the one who went out to the media with it and, and, and said, look, look, look what they're, you know, saying that they're going to do to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm worried about my 18 year old and my 20 year old who still attend that church. They're going to see their mom crucified. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they think of mom and her, her living boyfriend here. Maybe they're thinking, you know, well, you know, this is, this is what the church teaches. And, you know, why are you objecting to the church doing what the church says it's going to do? 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're the one who started. Like, didn't you know what they teach? And, um, well, you know, that's what it comes down to. And you know, she says, "Oh, I'm not a member there anymore." So why is she still attending? I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, one of the stories says that she's actually attending another church now. Uh, yeah, um, the, the MSNBC story says. Um, um, but she said that she's now her kids are going to be present. Yeah, and said she's planning on sending a letter to Grace Community Church to make sure it understood she's no longer a member. Right. Said her kids are going to be there, but she's going somewhere else. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, generally, you know, as a rule of thumb, if somebody says, I resigned from this church, I'm no longer under your care. Okay, well, then you you got to go deal with God. You know, but yeah, you're no longer under our care. Uh, but I don't know exactly what, what, you know, the situation there for her. Um, but. You know, there's one more thing I want to mention with this is her comment. Sure. I'm a Christian. That'll never change. My relationship with Jesus has to do with me and Jesus, and he knows my heart. All right. Now, that may be true. At the same time, I think this is especially true in America that we have this, this sense of, um, of the sort of individual faith that, you know, we say, well, um, you know, you can't be saved by your parents' faith. It's your own faith that saves you. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. But at the same time, um, faith doesn't exist in a vacuum. And, um, and you are account, your faith, you know, you're accountable, your actions, um, you're accountable not only to God, but, um, to, you know, look, look at what you're doing to the witness of the church. You know, people see this and they say, look at those Christians, look at what hypocrites they are. You know, so you, when you make Jesus look bad, then Christians need to say, hey, hold on a minute here. You know, regardless of what's going on in your heart, look at how your life is impacting the rest of the church and the rest of the world, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I think that something really needs to be said once in a while about corporate faith. That, um, you know, that we we express this faith together, you know, and that's why we have like in the Lutheran church, we have creeds, you know, that we say, I believe, but actually like the Nicene Creed was originally, we believe, um, if you look that's at it, a statement of doctrine, yeah. but you're absolutely right. I mean, there is this thing to say, to say this is, you know, my, I'm still a Christian. My relationship with Jesus hasn't changed. Um, that, that's a typical American response, you know, um, you know, heck. You know, heck with the church. I don't really care what these people think. No, there is something corporate. And and, and by the way, uh, Rebecca, you may think things haven't changed. Uh, you know, I'm sure David didn't think anything when he was messing around with Bathsheba either. Uh, God has a different idea of that. Mm-hmm. You know, so don't, you know, I mean, you know, that's that's the scary thing is he has another who can sit back and say, you know, well, you know, things that haven't changed, I haven't changed. You know, this is still the same. Yeah, not always so sure that's true from God's perspective. Right. But, well, as long as we're on, on people and things they don't like, um, man, where should we go? Um, oh, let's, let's deal with the other one. Then we'll do the Catholic stories. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe she should try making a, um, uh, that, this one could have gone with the first one too, uh, actually, t- in terms of kind of overreacting. But there's this. Um, this is down in Hattiesburg. Where's Where's this at? Mm, I had it. Um, Thames Elementary School. Things. Um, Andrew yeah. White. He's a sixth grader. Yeah, and, and it says yeah. uh, Hattiesburg, so it might be Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Um, not sure because this is from the Hattiesburg American, um, but I'm not sure where Hattiesburg is located. Well, anyway, um, they had an assignment to write a poem about uh, what Christmas means to you. All right. What Christmas, not what the holidays, what Christmas means to you. Okay. And so we have Andrew White, and um, he's a student, and so he wrote a poem. And it happened to mention Jesus. Well, duh, you know. 
Um, you kind of got to expect that. If my kids wrote a poem about what Christmas means to them, you can be sure that they'd mention Jesus. You know, I've got them trained <laughs> so that, you know, in yeah. the, the children's message, when you say, what's Christmas about? They don't say Santa Claus. They say Jesus, you know. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Hattiesburg, Mississippi is where this is located. Okay. So, uh, so you know, he wrote this poem, and there was another student that also um, mentioned Jesus. I thought it was kind of sad that only two kids out of the whole class mentioned Jesus in their poems. But uh, so he wrote a poem about Christ, and uh, the the uh, teacher says, uh, "I know that we can't discuss these types of things in school, so I asked the two of them to do another poem of their choice." So they had a they had to rewrite it. Um, nope, wrong. They students are allowed to discuss their faith in schools. Um, and while the teacher, there's you know there's a fine line of what the teacher can and can't say. Kids are allowed to say whatever they want. I did not know that. Right. Uh, and, uh, which is, which is fine. And the parents had a problem, which is fine. Um, and but. I, Okay, here's where I think she kind of they they went overboard. You know, they they contacted um, the Liberty Count. Oh, well, then they, he turned in a revision, uh, and but the revision she said it was light late, and so she deducted five points from his grade. So for this, and the teacher is being stupid here. Okay, the teacher is big wrong, and. Um, so they contact the Liberty Council, uh, which works with um, out of the Liberty University, uh, Jerry Falwell's University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, you know, begin to get all upset about it. And, you know, but, the, 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 you know, the, the superintendent said, uh, look, there, we have no policy against religious expression here. She used poor judgment. You know, she's a second year teacher. Uh, actually, last year she was a student teacher. Um, she was misinformed about the policy. She messed up. You know, we don't. Um, you know, we, we celebrate whatever is going. And he got um, the, the kid got the full credit for it and got it put it up with everybody else. But I think the parents overreacted a little bit. I yeah. Mean, okay. You know, you have the email first instead of before you go to some lawyer outfit contact the principal yeah now there have been cases where the kids have you know prayed in a school and the teacher told them not to and they contacted the principal and the principal backed them and the district backed them and you know okay that's when you bring the lawyers in and right. you know that's when the lawyer calls them up and says look do you really want to spend your district money on a lawsuit you're going to lose and by the way pay us too because we're going to, you know, sue for all our fees, and you will wind up paying us to pay, to pay for all this, because um, you're going to lose. Yeah. Or do you just want to back down? And there have been those who said, we don't want to educate these kids. We don't want that money going to classrooms. We want this money going to lawyers. And so they've lost. But, uh, you know, in this particular case, they, you know, they, you know, you know, the superintendent said, misinformed of the, the district policy. And, uh, you know, they would have corrected the kid and uh, I've corrected the, uh, the the teacher and kid would have gotten his way and everybody had been happy. So I think they kind of went overboard a little bit. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about how does this make Christians look or how does this make Christ look or, you know, or whatever. All right. Here you go. Christians overreacting. You know, and, um, you know, jumping into court right away instead of trying to resolve it in a loving and sensible and reasonable manner. Mm -hmm. And what happens? It doesn't make the church look good. It, you know, I saw a bumper sticker yesterday. I was in Madison and, um, and so there's a, just all kinds of, uh, real fun bumper stickers around there. And, uh, and this one said, why be born again? Um, why don't you just grow up? <laughs> I went, ouch. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, at the same time, 
you look at a story like this and you know where that bumper sticker is coming from. You know? Yeah. Instead of mm-hmm. just flying off the handle about it, you know, let's just sit down and talk with people, you know, talk to the, you know, okay, well, they emailed with a teacher or whatever, and, and that didn't take care of it. So then, yeah, you go to the principal and say, look, there seems to be a misunderstanding here about, you know, constitutional mm-hmm. rights and all that kind of stuff, at which point the principal would have said, you're right, I'll have a talk with the teacher, we'll get get straightened out, and we'll be good. And, and you know, this was district policy handles it so you know that would be the first thing to do is say hey what's the policy on this stuff you know so yeah and, and by the way the, and the father even said hey the, the superintendent and the principal handled it very well i could have been happier than well, by their um than, than by their their actions here you know everything they did was fine you know, I, yeah you know the teacher you know um i, I don't want to you know I, I don't know how old she is i mean she could be you know 23 years old uh, since this, that, you know, she, you know, she's fresh out of, you know, this is her first year teaching. Um, you know, and they said she couldn't be reached for comment. Well, I, I imagine she's probably hiding her poor little head somewhere and just like, you know, gee, I really stepped my foot into that one, didn't I? Um, yeah, maybe she honestly thought that. Maybe she thought, you know, I didn't have a right to be able to say, you know, to, to bring this up in class or it shouldn't be said in class. She wouldn't be the first teacher who was misinformed. Nope. And that, you know, that they could have been handled, I think, at a much lower level. Uh, and the other thing is then, too, is how does this get into the, you know, the newspaper? Yeah. You know, I, you know mom and dad contacted the newspaper. Right. Or somebody did. And, uh, the, um, you know, and the poor teacher's stupid comments are out there for everybody to see, you know, um, and so she, 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 she's, she's added on to a little bit of humiliation there. Um, but I don't know. Who knows what she is? I mean, I mean, she may be a very good Christian woman and didn't think it was appropriate. Uh, she may be a complete heathen and, you know, but I bet you either one, she's probably going to be accused of being a heathen now. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No, you know, I have a friend, a very good friend, uh, who, when she was student teaching, um, I don't know how they ended up on this subject, but the kids, um, asked her in the middle of a class whether she's a Christian or not. And, you know, she kind of looks over at her supervising teacher. Her supervising teacher's kind of, you know, and she's like, well, you know, I don't really want to talk about that right now. Or, you know, she's just like, because, you know, this is, she was going to school in Madison and, you know, uh, Christianity's not a real popular topic in uh, Madison schools, you know. And uh, so she's just, she just wanted, you know, she kind of changed the subject and said, well, you know, that's not really what we're talking about in class today and we need to get back on the, you know, well, the kids were, didn't want to let it go and, and, um, cause they're concerned about her, you know, <laughs> finally, and the ones that were, I mean, some of the kids were like crying cause they're all worried about her and, and stuff. And so like during recess, she took some of them aside and said, said, I'm a Christian. I, you know, very much believe in Jesus, that he's my savior. And, and, uh, but you know, I just can't really talk about it in class. And, and she actually, you know, if, if she had said, yeah, I'm a Christian, you know, you know, and, and just, then just gone on, she would be completely, that would be appropriate and within her rights and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and just let it go and just, you know, keep going. But just to, if, because if a student asks a teacher a question, they can answer that question. In fact, I've encouraged my kids in confirmation class. Um, I had a, a quiz that they had to take. It was a take home deal. And one of the questions on it was, is your math teacher a Christian? If you don't know, ask him. <laughs> And just to that, to encourage kids to, you know, be aware of the people around them, you know, and yeah, it's okay to ask them and it's okay for them to answer, you know, that kind of stuff. As long as the teacher's not pushing kids and saying, yeah, I'm a Christian and you should be too, you know, then, then you, you know, you can't really do that in a public school. But, um, right. I mean, I mean, what, 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 are you a Buddhist? Mm, I can't really say if I'm a Buddhist or not. You know, let's, let's move on to a different topic here. You know, I mean, yeah, you could say if you're a Buddhist or, you know, Hindu or, you know, whatever you, you know, might be into. Um, but, well, then there's people um, who aren't so polite about things, too. 
And which brings us down to the picture that you saw at the very beginning of this, uh, because, uh, because I forgot to turn it over. <laughs> um, this is, um, picture there is, um, Bishop R- Richard Malone. Actually, Dr. Richard Malone. He has a PhD from BU. Um, <clears throat> and he is the, um, uh, Bishop of Maine. So he, he takes care of, of all of Maine, which makes a lot of sense to me. And, uh, he has, um, been dealing with a guy by the name of Paul Kendrick. And, uh, who was the founder, one of the founders of the Maine chapter of the lay reform group Voice of the Faithful. And uh, who has been a very vocal critic of how church leaders respond to abuse claims and treated victims. And uh, he says this guy has, you know, uh, and the bishop says this guy has, um, you know, showed up at out-of-state meetings that the bishop has attended. He's uh, sent letters, uh, emails, um, showed up with, you know, he's speaking in, in public and confronted the bishop publicly. And, uh, you know, they basically said, look, you keep this going and... Um, we're basically going to excommunicate you because we're not going to allow you to take communion anymore. I wonder if they said that to Ted Kennedy. <laughs> Dear Teddykins, you can't take communion anymore because of your, you know, uh, 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 you know, your, 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 your work on life issues and other things. John Kerry, the same thing. They did this, uh, John Kerry. I remember that. Thing. Did they? Okay. But some of them did. I don't know if anybody up here in New England would do it. Um, a voice of the Faithful, it, so some of them can be pretty radical in that group. I mean, they are, you know, get rid of the priests, the, the people, you know, we can, we can do this as well as any priest can. Um, we should be ordaining women. Um, they're... they're some of them can be pretty radical in their, their their viewpoints. I don't know if this guy is, but some of the people, at least here in the Boston area, have been associated with that group. But, uh, you know, um, I don't know how many, you know, abuse issues they had in Maine, as opposed to, you know, here in, in the Boston area where it was all over the place. You know, they had a lot of problems. I don't know what they had. I mean, I don't know. what Was this guy even in office when it happened? Yeah, here's the thing. It's, it sounds to me like it's not so much an issue of – him saying, hey, this is wrong that this happened, but just how how he's actually, this um, Kendrick has been handling it. I mean, if he's, you know, really just being obnoxious about it, then it's not so much for speaking up and, you know, uh, it says uh, one of the biggest sins in the Catholic Church is to criticize a bishop. It doesn't sound like it's so much about the criticism, but how he's doing it, you know. Um, There's that whole commandment about bearing false witness against your neighbor and you know if he's just being really obnoxious to this guy you say look if you got a problem with what's going on fine but this is not the way to handle it right um you know it's a, yeah the, the one you said earlier about criticizing worship bishop is by a guy by the name of uh, reverend tom doyle virginia priest and advocate for victims um and he said uh, you know um the church leaders have been angered by the aggressive tactics of some activists. Well, some of them are, you know, extremely uh, uh, aggressive. Um, you know, uh, uh, on the, you know, and this guy seems to be trying to deal what he can with it. Uh, uh, Bishop Malone, he says, last year he released the names of twelve living former priests who had faced credible allegations of abuse in Maine. They also validated allegations against nine of 21 deceased priests identified by the attorney general being accused of sexual abuse. So, I mean, he's trying to do what he can to the best of his his, his actions. Um, so that's that's a, you know. All right, you're going the right way for a smack bottom. I'm just not too sure. Okay, even if the guy is being an, a, a, a jerk here to the bishop. Um, is that reason to say you can no longer take communion if you keep this up? I seem to have a thing for sinners. Well, I seem to have a thing for sinning. I don't know. It's a tough call. I mean, uh, you know, what? Why? What do you do? Do you do that, or do you get in a restraining order against the guy? Well, that's what they said actually happened, and I don't know if it's a. Um, 
uh, uh, he said um, he was going to attend the Christmas Eve Mass at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, where, I like this, where Malone often celebrates Mass. News, you know, newsflash, Cathedral is the seat of the bishop. That's why he would, be, yes, that's where he's going to celebrate Mass. Um but anyway, it says, you know, he received a criminal trespass order that barred him from the cathedral, the chancery, and Malone's residence. He reserved, he was also served an order to cease and desist from harassing Malone. So it sounds like, yeah, basically what they got was a restraining order against the guy. Um, and he said, you know, if he, uh, you know, the, um, the penalties will take place if he um, fails to abide by terms of a church order forbidding Kendrick from coming within 500 feet of the bishop or being in the same building when he's present. So, I mean, yeah, he can go to his own church and do whatever he wants. He can go to, you know, Tom Doyle's church and do whatever he wants. Um, but it's, you know, just stop harassing the bishop, you know, and, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, trying to deal with this. I mean, the guy was, if, if, you know, there was some evidence that he was being unresponsive, that he was hiding stuff, that would be different. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure that's necessarily going on here. Yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, to me, it sounds like, I, boy, I think I've got to side with the bishop on this one. I mean, there's probably a better way to handle it, but I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, it, it's a, it's a vicious thing. I mean, the fact that, I mean, you know, that there have been so many cases up here of, mm-hmm. um, you know, abuse of, you know, people who have been sexually abused by priests. I mean, it really is, a, it's a horrible thing. Uh, there are times I, I get nervous wearing my collar. Today I was uh, in an emergency, walking through, you know, leaving a hospital through the emergency room, going out to the, uh, after visiting a member, and I had my collar on, and there's these little kids in the emergency room. And, you know, I just, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, hmm, how many, you know, I'm married, I'm married. See, I, I, yeah. I'm not Catholic, I'm Protestant, okay? <laughs> um so, but, you know, you, you do kind of get tarred with that same brush. Yep. So it's, it's, I understand kind of where the guy's coming. I mean, yeah, you can understand anger and frustration, uh, especially, I don't know how long uh, Malone's been bishop, but maybe the previous guy blew him off. Yeah, that could be too. You know, sometimes those wounds yeah. don't go away and the next guy gets blamed for the previous guy's actions, you know, and I don't know. I, yeah, it's, if you're upset with somebody about something, go talk to them and act reasonable. And, you know, I mean, that's this, this whole thing. It's like, it's like the theme for tonight, overreacting. <laughs> that's for sure. But it, it, it's a hard situation. It really is not a, um, I don't think it's probably one of the easiest decisions or situations to work with. Um, he, Bishop Malone, was installed uh, as Bishop of Portland uh, March 31st, 2004. Okay, so he's been around for a while. Yeah, so he's not... Uh, after serving as Auxiliary Bishop in the Archdiocese of Boston South Region, which would have been my area. Uh, so he was... Yeah, he's been around for a while, and... Uh, where did you dig up that old fossil? That's kind of his uh, background. Well, maybe the guy should just get a Catholic application for his iPhone. That'll work. <laughs> you know, uh... Although, th- th- this article says it's an iTunes app. I noticed, did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, that's where you get it. I mean, you get it from the... The iTunes uh, store. Um, this is that's right. Yeah, it does. So, and that's the only place you can get it because the way the Apple requires all iTunes apps to only be sold through the iTunes store. So, um, it's a short way of saying for iPhone and iPod Touch. Uh, this is an application called iBreviary. Um, is rated, created by a 35-year-old tech-savvy Italian priest and Italian web developer. Um, and it has gained the support of the Vatican's Pontifical Council for Social Communications, which is like... Um, 
you know, Vatican Facebook or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just, sorry. Um, it's, uh, I, uh, it has, uh, uh, future plans call for addition of audio like Gregorian chants. Basically, it's uh, it's it's a list of prayers. Is essentially all it is. Yeah, a, 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 brevary, a brevary is a collection of prayers. Is what it is. So there's already uh, some prayer apps. <clears throat> See, I, I went to take a look at this. I thought because uh, we've got an iPod Touch in the house, and I thought, oh, you know, check it out and see what it's like. And uh, but it, it costs ninety nine cents, and I went. I'm not going to pay for this, you know? And, uh, in fact, I was kind of disappointed that you could just, you know, slap a bunch of prayers together and then charge for it. And, and the funny thing is there's a lot of other Catholic, uh, iPod and, or, uh, uh, iPod touch and iPhone apps out there. Uh, like, in fact, one is called Catholic. Um, that's also basically a collection of prayers, uh, Hail Mary and stuff like that. There's a rosary one where you can actually flip the beads um, which I thought was kind of cool if you're Catholic and it's got, you know, cool graphics and stuff like that. I'm like, well, that's a lot better than, um, you know, than this one. So, um, I actually met a guy one time who de- developed a Lutheran rosary. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the Hail Mary, you did, they had some, something, I guess, you know, Luther's 10 commandments or something like that. But yeah, he had actually developed a, a Lutheran rosary, uh, cause, uh, his feeling was it wasn't so much that, you know, the the idea wasn't you know wasn't so bad that you had you know uh you know certain prayers that you said for each bead you know and you know and 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 everything so he thought that was kind of a good practice because Luther said you could never exhaust the catechism so there were different parts of the catechism you recited as you went through it but uh, it was kind of an interesting thing a, a friend of mine uh, it was a student at uh, Concordia Bronxville who developed it he wound up going to Fort Wayne I don't know if he's still in this I don't know if he ever became a LCMS pastor or not. Um, but it was uh, stuff, but I think this is kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, it says that there's prayers in, uh, English, Latin, French, Italian, and Spanish. So, uh, uh apparently it's fairly, fairly popular. He's, it's been downloaded 8,000 times. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a pretty big niche. Catholics, you know, yep. and the fact that it's. Uh, you know, the Vatican stamps their seal of approval on it, and, you know, then it's going to get some publicity that way, and people are going to check it out. I would say that if you're, if you are Catholic and you're, you know, you're thinking about getting this, take a look at the other ones out there first. Um, because frankly, I don't think that it's probably the best one out there. I think there's some better ones out there, and I don't remember how much the other ones cost. Some of them might be free. So check those out first. I was, I, I have to say, I was really disappointed that there was a cost to this thing because it was so simple. I mean, anybody could whip something like this together. And, um, and I just, I have a hard time charging for something so simple. I mean, yeah, it's only a buck, you know, but at the same time, you're going to get a lot more people using it if it's free, you know? Well, it says that it's to fund the mobile prayer program. The uh, initiative uh, uh, will support a charity for young people sponsored by my parish. So I guess that's so, all right uh, if it's going to charity. No. So. But still, it's something I would, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's kind of a neat idea. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, the, you know, to have a collection of prayers. I mean, uh, you know, I, um, Right now, in my own devotions, I'm using uh, prayers by John Gerhardt, great Lutheran theologian, uh, translated by Matt Harrison, the LCMS uh, director of um, human care. And um, actually, it was given to me by him uh, when he came and made a presentation in our district office in order to, district board of directors, in order to kind of, I think, talk us into saying yes. He gave us each a copy of his book. So, um, should have had him sign it, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it might be worth something, you know, if he ends up uh, getting elected to be the next president. But yeah, you never know. <laughs> that's a whole other story. But, uh, and a little uh, inside baseball. So, but, um, you know, I guess when I first saw this, I got excited because I thought, oh, people praying for each other, you know? And I've talked about that before, the need for uh, some sort of mobile application 
where people can submit prayer requests and then have other people pray for them. And we've talked about websites that do that and stuff like that. And then, but then it's just a list of sort of prayers that you read off the screen. And I went, Oh, is that it? <laughs> and you know, so I, I was disappointed. Come on, you know? And in fact, I saw one of the uh, prayer applications. I saw, uh, I was reading one of the user reviews and it said, you know, my big complaint about this is that it doesn't have any, um, interface for adding prayers to the list. And he said, you know, in the, uh, Roman Catholic Church, we have such a, a, a great, um, variety and, and such a, a rich tradition of, of prayers and things that, you know, it would be nice to be able to add additional ones to the ones that are available. And I thought, you know, yeah, even that, you know, something to make it more than just uh, something that you could write on a little, um, you know, note card and stick in your pocket, you know, let's, let's make this actually worthwhile um, and, and take advantage of the digital platform. But that's me and I'm a geek and, you know, and I'd like to make things interactive. And I think that interactivity is, uh, you know, sort of the future. So, um, let's, let's go in that direction. And I, I think that we as a church need to do that when it comes to, um, when it comes to, to making materials available to people, uh, you know, this, this people want to interact with it. They don't want to just read it. It's, it's why, uh, TV is becoming less and less popular and things like YouTube and, and other, uh, you know, online media are becoming more popular because people can talk about it with each other, you know? And, uh, so, all right, you know, here's my request for the application, even though I'm never going to buy it, um, is, all right, give it some kind of interactivity, either at least be able to, you know, add your own stuff to it or, uh, you know, allow people to send prayer requests through it or, you know, something. So there's lots of possibilities there. All kinds of them. Hey, that brings us to the end of another episode, folks. Amazing how fast this hour goes by. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've got ideas for what would be a great application. You know, you know, Dale is such a, a whiz at, at creating things and stuff. <laughs> maybe you've got a good prayer application or something you think he should design I mean, he's got an iPod touch over there, so, uh, yeah. you know, maybe not really a programmer, like though. <laughs> C++, he's not a language I speak. <laughs> he's being modest. Anyway, so send us your ideas, what you think he should put up there. Uh, you can write to us at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Or maybe you think we're just have no idea what we're talking about in some of these stories. Or maybe you have some background that we didn't know about. Uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. We're interested in your comments. We will share them, uh, positive or negative. Yep. Yep. Or just leave a comment, um, like they did on VO for me last week. Um, preferably not like they did on VO for me last week. Please be gentle. We, yeah, we take these comments to heart. Um, you know, uh, as as long as it's readable and not filled with profanity, um, those we just sort of laugh off. But <laughs> um, but uh, also a reminder that I'm on Twitter. Uh, you can find me Crossfeed News uh, on Twitter, and uh, if you if you follow me, send me a link or, or uh, uh, send me a little at message uh, just to let me know that you're a listener because. I get a lot of people following me that I don't know who they are, and so I'll follow you back if you're a listener. So You don't really put on there getting up in the morning, you know, or whatever else, you know, people put on those things. No, 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 no. Mostly, uh, um, oh, if I see an interesting article or, uh, or sometimes talking about, you know, here's a, here's a challenge that I'm kind of thinking about, uh, wondering about. Um, but yeah, once in a while I'll do, you know, just kind of, well, like this morning I posted that, um, I'm on vacation this week and, um, and so I didn't need to be, uh, in church this morning, but then they ended up canceling church anyway. And, uh, because we, the main highway going through here was travel not advised, towing services prohibited because there's a, a quarter of an inch of ice everywhere. Hmm. And, uh, so, so yeah, I 
took the Sunday off and then we didn't have church anyway. But what it did mean is that before I went to bed last night, I turned off the ringer on the phone, turned off the answering machine and, and that so that people, because sometimes people call the house um, wanting to know what's whether there's going to be service and that. So I turned all of that off <laughs> and uh, so that, you know, if they wanted to call somebody, they could call the elders and, and find out because they should know that I'm on vacation. So, um, but yeah, it was kind of, I went, Oh, when I took this Sunday off. I should have taken next Sunday off instead, you know. <laughs> but that's all right. I'm, I'll be anxious to get back. So I enjoy my job. Which is why he's on vacation, because he enjoys it so much. <laughs> hey, everybody, take good care. We'll see you later on, either this week or early next week. God bless you all. Have a good continuing Christmas, and see you in Epiphany. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless.